out macro them and maybe still have a shot. Well, let's see if these new elements are truly greater than the sum of their parts against the Unicorns of Love, starting on picks and bans, Cassiopeia, Morgana off the table, and so is LeBlanc, and then Alistar. This telegraph's definitely an Azir first pick for elements. I, I'm, I'm really wondering if Unicorns of Love are gonna give a third ban uh, on the Azir, or if they're gonna p take out one of the junglers and then force elements to decide what they value more, their Gragas or their Azir. Or I might be wrong in elements, might be predicting my prediction, and who knows? Let's see how deep the rabbit hole goes. Uh, we'll have to see there. Crepo, for now, Thresh is off the board. What does this prompt Unicorns to do? I, I think if they do ban the Azir, there's a ton of very strong jungle picks up, but we've seen that, yes, they do want to prioritize Frog in getting something that, that he will be very comfortable on. I, I think the Azir are very, very strong right now with all of our mid laners. It's going to be difficult if they pick it up first. What is that last ban coming through? Kalista indicating that Unicorn uh, says if you pick Azir, we'll go for Urgoth. Does they do the same thing they could have done with the junglers, but instead they do it with the 80 carries, however. And then it ru ruins the chance for elements to pick Sivir here. That's the one thing. Mm -hmm. um, actually, no, it doesn't because uh, actually Kalista into Sivir is fine. Never mind. Um, Sivir into Urgoth is fine. I lied. I would like to see an Azir pick here for elements first. Still quite a lot on the board. We saw yesterday Dexter massive on the Sejuani choice. They don't have to necessarily pick that first. All the junglers. Pretty much available. Gragas also on the table. I think the Azir is a really, really smart choice right now, yeah. But Froggen showed that he definitely knew how to play against it yesterday. Of course, that was Betsy. He's a very different player than Power Beam. No, that, that is true. He, he likes, uh, or allegedly, or seems to like uh, the Vladimir into the Azir matchup. But I think he could have got punished harder. He got pushed in. Elements, let's not forget, they were pushed in in three lanes at the same time with no wave clear. The better team will absolutely uh, punish you for that. Diamond Fox was not invading at all. Uh, early Sivir pickup, yes because the counter Urgot pick is not going to do too much because Sivir can just simply spell through that. If they would have banned Urgot, then the Kalista sivir relationship would have been a little different. Um, but yeah, Unicorns might pick up the Azir themselves here, knowing that Elements is likely to go for the Vladimir in response, at least make the draft a little predictable on both sides. Mm -hmm. But I want to take it back a step and, and look at the bans from Elements and see that they targeted Thresh and Morgana. A lot of respect for Hilosan, while Unicorns of Love did not want to play against an Alistar from Promise Q. Stunning performance uh, yesterday from Promise Hugh. Leaves the support pool pretty shallow. You know, what's going to come out next? Is uh, is Hillisang going to punish Promise Hugh? Say maybe he only plays four champions. He'll pick out the fourth and he'll have to go for a random support pick. Are we going to see a bard again? In all honesty, it could happen right here. It absolutely could. But for right now, Unicorns, they take their time all the way down to the wire. They lock in Annie and Gragas. Doesn't reveal too much of their strategy right now. Although there's some... Wombo combo potential already coming out of there. Let's see what happens as Elements looks to their next pickups. So Dexter acknowledging his roots a little bit. Yeah, if you don't know Dexter very well, he's a very avid Elise fan. He likes playing it, uh, especially uh, comboed with Thresh in the lane, you know, Lantern Elise in, get the cocoon off. Highly, highly doubt that he's going to lock it in. Uh, I've been wrong before, uh, but you have the likes of Sejuani open. You have Evelyn open still. The thing is, what I like about Sivir first pick is that it gives you so many opportunities and possibilities. You can pick Vladimir, rush in Wombo again. You can pick Evelyn, flank, slow him down, speed up your team. Sivir does not need peeling in fives because she has a high mobility. She has a lot of AoE. She doesn't even have to hit the right target. Her bouncing blades will get to that target anyways. Her boomerang blade will get to that target anyways. And then the fourth support pick coming in here for uh, Promise Q on Nautilus. You can lock down at any. Definitely like that pick. Double tankiness plus Sivir. I really like what Elements is building here. Let's see how they round it out later. Yep, I do like that combo up with the Rek'Sai. They definitely got some serious mobility and lockdown available to them. Let's we'll see what they go for on the other side. The Unicorns of Love might be expecting that Urgot pickup. And of course, Chachi, you know, he's known for some pretty interesting choices. Maokai would be one of the more vanilla of those. Yeah, and he does take it. You don't really want to give away Maokai at the same time either, because then you're playing against a really, really dirty composition from Elements. A lot of CC, a lot of hard engage coming out of every single champion with a hard-to-catch uh, AD carry. So might it might not even be a favorable pick. might just be a steal at the same time. You have to keep that in mind. Urgot locked in very short range. So Unicorns of Love, uh, barring a nice pick from uh, Power of Evil, will lack some siege potential. So they'll have to definitely see if they can fix that, because they're... They're not really telegraphing a nice split push either. They're, they're striding towards a, a mid-game, 20, 30-minute teamfight brawl type of thing. And they're playing, I guess, into or with element style from yesterday, if they, that's a repeat. We mm -hmm. might see a lot of fights here, Pyra. Well, we might indeed. And elements certainly looking for some wombo combo of their own. If they take that Orianna, it will be all on the back of Froggen. 
with the shock waves, but not a fan. Yeah, let's see what they do as the timer ticks down. I don't think it's going to be the Trindamir. Instead, it's a Victor. I like the Victor more. Has a little more forward pressure, has a little more less scaling time needed. If Whoa. you play Orianna, you sit too far back. Uh, again, Kog'Maw mid, okay. pretty predictable. We we know uh, Power of Evil uh, was going to look for that pick, likely since it plays well in the composition. This time, Unicorns of Love have planned ahead enough picks. This composition works well around Kog'Maw. As we said, no siege potential in, the, in those four picks, but a lot of fight potential, a lot of peel potential, and they can keep their one-man Kog'Maw army safe. And now it kind of rounds out the comp really nice for Unicorns of Love. Elements? A uh, pretty nice combo, uh, combination of champions as well. Rumble in the top lane because in addition to, to having two tanks already, Rek'Sai and Nautilus, you can get some more damage. And an extra engage tool in Rumble you can uh, slow people down with the Equalizer, allowing the Saver ulti to speed up and basically overwhelm uh, the Unicorns. Exactly. They're just going to want to crash over them like a wave and, well, send them down to the deep. That way Nautilus can deal with them. But for now, Elements, they've got that composition locked in for Unicorns of Love. Well, we will see how the damage split happens this time around. Hopefully for Unicorns, not the same as it happened yesterday as we see the coaches shaking hands, walking off the stage, looking here at... Here we are again. Here we are again, yes. Final game of the 10th mm -hmm. game of the European LCS. I'm excited. I like Good both drafts. Uh, I like both drafts. I want to see what lanes they uh, turn out. I think lane swap, not too likely to happen. I like that Sivir can spell shield a lot of the things that Ergot Annie can throw at Sivir. At the same time, she can get caught off guard by a stun. Yeah, definitely interesting. Very interesting possibilities. They are quite interesting. And this game is sure to be a slugfest. And why don't you guys keep on letting us, you, letting us know what you think. LOL Esports is the place to be. Hashtag EL win or UOL win. And we are on to the rift for the final game of week one of the European LCS Summer Split. Elements versus the Unicorns of Love. And I love that the crowd is still hyphy here at the fifth game of the day. They're ready for a bloodbath, Harry. I think these teams are ready for a bloodbath, too. And these two hit each other. They will hit hard. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. You can see it. Starting off, we have the makings of a line of scrimmage. Will it get any different? I think the crowd is chanting for Steve. Guys, he's gone. He's already played today. I'll we'll see him next week. I'll we'll see him next week yet again. So, standard line of scrimmage, as you just said. Let's see whether um, j -Walk can start a forest fire on the top lane, or if Izuchachi is strong enough to survive that. Tabs and Promise Q here. Yeah, they want the Warden. They want to have an eye on what's going on in this I like him. side. Yeah, Ardexo is, is still able to harass him a little bit, but he can't stop the Ward from going down. So yeah, you see the, the Ward placed on the left side by Promise Q allows them to group up on the other side, get two men in and force the Unicorns back and get a deep Ward. This gives some knowledge whether the Unicorns bot lane is actually in a bot lane, whether they're starting to the grump or not. Let's see how this plays out. So far, it looks like we are headed for those standard lanes. No shenanigans from either of these teams. Healy and Vardex head themselves down in through the brush. Very deep. Elements notices. General rule of thumb when you play with a melee and a range support against double ranged, you want to do a camp so you can use the relic stacks to your advantage, hit the level 2 spike quicker. However, uh, UOL not going for the camp, thinking they will get invaded upon. Elements knowing that UL might not go for the camp, and instead Tabs is going to leash. This is a very bold move. Solo sending in the Nautilus in case they start the camp, and at the same time leashing. Real like it. Elements gets ahead level one. Yeah. Freezing from Healers. They're so afraid far. of a lane swap. Potential freeze here. Yeah, lack of knowledge playing in there for Elements' favor. So Promise is going to show Tabs miss one know this happens. Yep. Really important for the level of timing. No longer levels up on nine creeps. They want to push now. One, Experience deficit on the AD carry means you want a hard push. And because Ergon Annie doesn't have any push potential, just poke, they want to use the bouncing blades as quick as they can to get the lane in their favor. However, they have a melee range champion. It's going to get tricky. Healersign gets all in here. Yeah, melee range doesn't matter when you can get in the enemy's face. Healy is burning away, and he has to burn his flash to get away. So this is what I love so much about bot lane. In, it, in reaction to Elements trying to get that push to hit the level 2 first, UOL tries to stop that by aggression, but Promise Q goes aggressive, hits level 2, and really doesn't like that range creep. Dredge lane in the face. No, that's uh, not very happy with that one. Power of Evil goes and pops a ward down, waiting to get right back into it. Meanwhile, up in top, Chachi's taking a little bit of abuse from JWoww, but he is able to back off as the Singed Bark is uh, slowly healing up. Full HP coming out of his jungle clear. Can take the crab and go for a gank. Kiki is a lot lower. 
They don't get a leash, that's a difference. Mm -hmm. Go back to level one. Dexter got that leash. Now he's invading the enemy jungle on full HP while he knows that Gregus is gonna suffer a little more. He's setting up for a gank in the middle, Empire. Yes, he is. Waiting patiently, did avoid that ward. And yeah, that, that is the big difference in the way these two started this game. Also, keep an eye on Dexter, especially this game. He was massive on Sejuani yesterday, but... I think they spotted him. Uh, yeah, they pinged him out earlier. Yep. So the the, gonna be able to counter the time advantage that he gained in doing that, we saw the Scuttle Crab go down on the other side roughly 10 to 15 seconds later, is now lost because, yeah, he was spotted on the side. He had an opportunity to potentially gank, but probably will spot him. This neutralizes the advantage from the leash. And we're back to square one. Controlling the jungle, the topside jungle that is. It's already taken away. The Raptor camp looks to go for the Krugs as well. Now, meanwhile, Froggen pushing Power of Evil in on this mid side. Both mid laners level four. It's a face full of Death Ray. And he will continue to try and farm under that tower. Froggen takes a little bit back though. Yeah, farm on bottom. Even though they had that little altercation, he was saying lost his flash. Farm 24 CS to Urga, 21 to Sivir. So, not too much happening there. Not too much indeed. Looks like Kikis is going to realize he's been had. In his he's been jungle. bamboozled. Have to go down elsewhere for his farm. Yeah, small experience lead I imagine for Dexter at this point. Hasn't faced yet though. He's going for the, the greedy farm. Wants all that sweet money. And Chachi's wave is pushing back. You know, his creeps outnumbered those of JWoww's. So that means he's automatically pushing. And he can never stop that unless j starts killing that wave. Um, Chachi may have to be careful for him in gank. He doesn't know where Dexter is, but he should be fine in theory. Yeah, speaking of Dexter, he is actually heading slowly down the bottom side. He's got a few camps to take, but we'll see if he decides to turn his attention to that bottom lane. Back in that lane, Tabs and Promise Q here. They're down in CS versus Vardags, but the real key here is going to be the Annie. Stun still up, but only level 4. And no flash on the Annie, and that's why Dexter's going about. Even though he can help his rumble out, he knows Annie has no flash. So he can go for the knock-up flash, or the flash knock-up rather. And because UL has to respect this, Elements is somewhat freezing the lane and putting it in the position in front of their tower where it's really hard for Hillisang to poke, let alone overextend, because he has to constantly respect Dexter coming around any corner. They can't even deport because technically he could be in that rush. So as long as Dexter doesn't show, there will be a pressure advantage in the bot lane for Elements. Let's see how they react. Just trying to bait Vardags out. The dredge line hits the minion. However, Vardags does take a little bit of damage. Dexter reveals himself. The trap is sprung, but they weren't in position. Second time. To get caught. I would Second say. time, Promise Q. Yeah, a little nervous. Doesn't really saw. Didn't really see that creep, and I didn't get the dredge line. Otherwise, he would have guaranteed forced the flash from Vardags. Mm -hmm. uh, unlucky. Definitely proving that the target Alistar ban was uh, was the right one because. Not comfort, not in his comfort zone right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we've seen this be a strategy so far to uh, try to pick on the newcomers and poor Steve. Right now, yeah, poor Steve, but that's okay. Everyone loves him. Let's see if Promise Q can amass the same level of fame after this game, or will this champion pool be a little bit in doubt right now? Let's take a look back at this top lane because Chachi jumps in onto J Wow. Kick is coming in for the movement. JWoww's on the wrong side of the tower here. Throws down the equalizer, but Kikis just jumps right through it. JWoww's gonna have to burn his flash to get away from that. What I really like about that flash is that it is the absolute latest moment possible. Froggen's getting aggressive, but Dex is waiting in the wings. See his power of evil. Thought he only had one to deal with. Instead, he had two. Burns both of his summoners to get away from that. I'm not sure the ghost was necessary. So here, flashing early is good because if Power of Evil gets knocked up, he will have to flash out afterwards anyways. On the top lane, however, the, using the flash on the rumble very late doesn't allow Kikis to react to this flash to carry the body slam over. Very smart and a little bit ballsy play by uh, JWoww, but he flashes at the exact right frame where he has to and really, really impressive. Yeah, he's missed out on a little bit of farm here though after that, he was forced back. So Chachi will be able to back and uh, pick up his catalyst, the protector. Dexter, meanwhile, on the bottom riverside going and grabbing himself a Promise you really does not like those minions. No. Third dredge line. The momentum in CS though has shifted in Tab's favor. He's 67 to 56 of the Urgot on Bardags, and now Dexter's hanging around on the bottom side. He's got to be careful on this dive though. Hilly is uh, getting close to that level six mark. We'll have the Tibbers. He's got to stun up and available. So Tab's is happy farming to this point because now he gets a, a BF sword and a little more gold to invest in maybe a ward. I don't, I'm not sure if he has enough for boots. At the same time, he delayed the tier long enough for the Urgot. He snuck a base right here. This is what Tab's like doing. His playstyle is all right. Sometimes he will hide in that brush. 
and he does that enough against you that you will, you will assume that he's there, and then suddenly he's gone. So he's a really, really master of mind gaming in terms of bases, and it's relatively safe on his side. He disappeared, was hoping Unicorns of Love reacted too slowly and could show up in lane with a BF sword and then absolutely uh, wreak havoc. But. Yeah, yeah. Vardex, he's got to be able to back and get some items at this point because he's only sitting on that longsword right now. Meanwhile, though, this may open up a potential dragon for elements, but Dexter just moves right by it. Yeah, but they're setting up the vision right now. They're waiting for Taps to push him bottom again. UL go for the cross map, and they go on JWoww. Yeah, they do. Kekis, they may be able to secure this one. Equalizer's thrown down. JWoww is in a lot of trouble, but Kekis is taking some damage, too. JWoww's giving him a run for their money, but I don't think he's going to be running for much longer. He will go down. That's first blood to Chachi, but quick to react. Elements are on the dragon. Nice game by the Unicorns. I feel JWoww could have been a little more careful when you know it's a double... St it's, it's like a three-step process, rather. You push in the bot lane, you're going to base in reaction. Their bot lane will base. You have the momentum, you have the tempo. This means you will pick up a quasi free dragon. That means your top laner has to chill. He has to play back on the top side, not overextend, because a good team will recognize that that's going on. They will concede that dragon and go to get you on the other side of the map, and JO drops dead. But still, I like the dragon pickup for elements. Yeah, it's a little hard to chill when you got your flame on, but <laughs> Jay Wow, that time. That is indeed true. <laughs> we'll make it back to base, that's okay. And I think he'll still be nice and relevant for this mid game setup. Unicorns of Love, they did give up that dragon now, so at just shy of 10 minutes, slight lead of gold over to Unicorns thanks to that first blood, but they are lacking the dragon. And the wave pushing back, good wave managed by Tabs. This is where he's really good at as an AD carry. He's not missing much CS. While he still picked up that dragon, he had the favorable base timing. Got the objective, the wave bounced back into his control. He's farming yet again, comfortably. Doesn't need that much attention right now. Uh, Sivir is a utility-based AD carry. Kick is coming in for the gank. Uh, I wonder if Element spotted that pink port, because that usually telegraphs that the gank is coming. Let's see how this plays out. Well, they're certainly playing far back here. Tab should have no trouble clearing this wave under tower. Sends out some bouncing blades to make it so, and Kikis just shows face. They're going to utilize this number advantage to just get some pressure on the tower. Proskew! This time it was close. No minions to block his path. Frogan picks up blue buff. Then that, that means they should know where Dexter is right now. So there's a lot of hidden information in League of Legends. When those mid laners around this time of the, time of the game rather move to the left side or the right side to pick up their blue buff, they come back without losing any HP. You can bet your money on it that they just got help from the jungle. So they should know where these junglers are at this point in the game based on the mid laners' movements. And because of that, tell. What they are planning to do next. Crab Vision going to be cleared by the Unicorns here, but it will be a while before that dragon becomes tenable for them. Meanwhile, all the towers still standing this game. Extended lane phase. This is typically how Elements in the past has liked to play with this new lineup. So far, the trend holds. Yeah, Vardex not afraid to start poking 1v2 because he knows there's a pink one behind him. Elements has no idea where Hillisang is, so the, they'll, they'll assume the worst. They'll assume that he's in the lane. He could disappear at any given time and maybe get frogged down in the mid lane. Surprisingly stealthy for a fat man. Kikis uh, did, in fact, base. He's going up towards the middle. But meanwhile, Tabs and Promise Q are playing incredibly safe on this one. Farms have been very, very even between these two AD carries. They have to. Uh, it's bounced a little bit, but yeah, nothing seriously significant. And I feel like fairly even amounts of time has been invested in this bot lane by the jungle. But it's been a while since Dexter showed there. And now he's down again, but he's starting to back. Yeah, Elements uh, showing a pretty distinctive style here. Bot lane focused in their ganks, even though they have the utility AD carry in Sivir. JWoww is playing on an island, uh, reminiscent of what the critique was that uh, Wicked got a lot in Elements, that he was playing alone and his team wasn't really helping him too much. They seem to play slow, not give away any kills, and they really want to spike in that mid to late game. Uh, 30 CS lead, as you pointed out here, 4 Vizzy Charge in the top lane. JWoww got two ganks on him, had to burn his teleport. Um, Arguably could have survived the second gank if he played back a little more. Uh, let's see if uh, teams start exploring that more in the future. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how that differential between the two top laners is going to affect uh, these teams trying to go for a fight. But right now, they're more interested in trying to get catches. Kikis, though, a little too quick on the draw for them. He dashes himself out of danger. So we had that fancy 0 to 50 minute stat where we were constantly saying how bloodbathy the Unicorns of Love were. There's too many, two minutes left to get about five or six, seven kills to uh, average that stat. So unicorns turn on the fire. What else are you seeing a distinctly different style? Speaking of fire, Jay Wow could be burning up in just a minute. In comes Chachi, gets the jump on him, has the level advantage, and Jay Wow's got to run away from that. 
Yeah, unicorns, I feel like they've been cowed a little bit by this new element style. Yeah, but at the same time, they're comfortable in their position where they're, where they're in right now because they have a hyperscaling component in the mid lane. If they didn't have that, they would have been in trouble, but Kargma scales so well, and we saw yesterday how hard Power of Evil can carry with that champion. Yeah, and he's getting pretty darn close there to his loot and Zacho, so that's going to start to sting quite a lot. Froggen so far has uh, kept a slim lead in CS on him, but there really hasn't been that much going on in the mid lane since the earlier attempt by Dexter. Power of Evil, though, he's really been fantastic at making sure he keeps the vision around his lane safe. Yeah, definitely a little more pressure on the, on the side of UL on top of elements. Nothing really going to happen. Hillerstein picked up Distortion Boots already, so he, he definitely wants to do the staple, the bread and butter of an Annie support, which is Flash Tibbers. Wait, burn the enemy's flash at the worst, and then get your flash up sooner so you can flash tippers again. Dexter hovering around bot lane again. This is definitely a pattern. Dexter's spent the majority of his time yesterday on bottom, which I think was the right call. Today, I think he should have spent more time top to at least get JWA rolling a little bit more. Silver Nautilus should be able to hold their own. They should, certainly. But now, with under a minute till the next dragon spawns, that instantly becomes a priority for both these teams. Blue buff was... Uh, Pinged away by Dexter, but power people in the area kick us as well. They could attempt to go over and steal, but it's a little bit too risky. Wouldn't want to spend all that with so many unicorn members there. And here we are, 30 seconds on this next Drake. Vardex is trying to base right now. They're not going to cancel, even though they, they spotted it out. And Power of Evil basing too. If Froggen kept track of the gold that's on Power of Evil, they might be able to rush this dragon. However, picking a blue of is, is ne necessary for AP Kogma, else he's just simply going to run out of mana. Now we can continuously poke, poke, poke. Well, Elements looking for the reactionary tower, and I believe that's the first tower of the game going down in Elements' favor. They will be able to get it, but before they can back and spend that gold, they've got a dragon to contend with. Kickus is spotted out by the Prey Seeker from Dexter Dragon. Now live on the table, Scuttle Shrine in favor of Elements, and they have stacked four members here, both top laners with their teleports available. How are Elements going to play this one out very conservatively for the time being? In comes Kickus, though. Teleport started by Visit Shot. Double on the is down. Froggen is getting knocked into the team, and he's going down. Thrown in the equalizer. That's Jay Wow burning away, but Tabs will pick up Vardak and the rest of the Unicorns are starting to melt. There they go, Hilly is down, Vardax is down, Kikis and Power are safe, Shachi causing some havoc, JWoww, Sapling's down, will that be enough? Dexter's now been turned on, but he's able to tunnel away to safety. Close calls all around, Shachi's still on the chase, but he has to back away. Absolutely massive engage there by Hilosang, followed up by Kikis, knocks Froggen into his team. Luckily for Elements, Froggen got his damage off, and that made that fight closer than it could have been. This could have been an absolutely wash for the Unicorns. Relatively even, everybody is so low that they can't even do better. Let's watch this again. Two-man Tibbers, followed by the knockup. Froggen doesn't know what's hitting him. Left, right, and center. He gets knocked in, flashes in place, but this is really vital. Vargas goes really low, does no more damage. Let's keep an eye on, on where Power of Evil is. He joins the fight right now. He keeps poking, poking, poking. He's relatively low, so he had a bout with Dexter earlier. And look at the range, what he can already do on this Kog'Maw. And Vision actually, no attention was placed on him by Dexter. He's so tanky that he can be the front line. Together with Kiki's, this two-man tank squad can zone control for Power of Evil. Right, and then that Kog'Maw Rage meant that he was pretty much allowed to just pew-pew from up on the ledge. And now, Unicorns, they have the better positioning. They will be able to secure their first dragon of the game, and they do smite it down by Kikis. And now Jay Wow pushing in on the top side. He's going to be helped by Dexter, too, and he's got a wave coming up at his back. It looks like we might be in for a tower trade, Crepo. Yeah, we are. And he was signed such such a good tippers. Did exactly what he needed to do. Held it on long enough. Made it so that he set up Kikis perfectly. And this is the guy that's playing with three of his supports banned out. He banned out his own Alistar. Elements banned out Thresh, banned out Morgana. He still finds an opening in the Annie and plays it marvelously, even though he had to use his flash early. Only oh. died once, just in that fight. We're gonna have some tower races right here. Three members, four members now of, of Unicorns down on the bottom side. A tiny minion wave is all that is going to be helping Elements to put some tower of Power damage the wave here towards there. Yeah, the wave clear. Power of Evil with that Luden's Echo is just a little bit too strong now, so Elements will not be able to do this. But let's take a look down on the bottom side as Unicorns of Love are going to get stopped short by JWoww, but still... JWoww uses Equalizer in working. his best Power of Evil uh, impression. Power's backed away. This yeah, he had to, he had to. Gonna push us. He yeah. was scared of getting flanked on the tier 2 tower. That's why he respected Elements enough to be a good enough team that they could dive him 4v1. Even tower trade, 500 gold apart, 400 gold apart rather, but only 5 kills in this match was supposed to be a bloodbath. What happened, Europe? Uh, 
I don't know, man. Sometimes it just has to go back and be a little bit more calm. But the towers have been falling very quickly in succession. It's been two for two so far. Unicorn's looking to make it a nice and round three in this mid lane. See if they can do it. Kik is pushing JWoww back. Tabs is there. The sapling's down. They heard the Rek'Sai scream, but Unicorns of Love are paying it no mind as they start to chunk away on the tower. Hilly, he's got the Tibbers, but he does not have Flash, so they have to respect the potential engage. But watch the Flash timer on Hilly saying it's almost ready. Then take your eyes and look at Elements. Flash is down on JWoww, Dexter, Frog, and Tabs. And promise you, nobody has Flash on their side. This is where the... This is the 1 minute 30 seconds window where Distortion boosts are absolutely... Crazy efficient, and this is where UL really wants to drive that advantage home. Or just go home. Well, drive it home, go home. All the same. At the end of the day, they can definitely utilize that time to spend a little bit of gold here. So let's take stock of where we are right now. 19 minutes on the clock. It is a 600 gold lead for Elements. Very slim. A pair of dragons. Each team has one. Three towers to two. So Elements, they're ticking ahead ever so slightly in just about every box, but that's it. I think it will be very interesting to see how this game evolves. A lot of eyes of Power of Evil. He can't get caught ever, and it's so it's gonna be really rough. Uh, definitely the equalizer coming down, slowing him down is enough to get Dexter in range with the knock up. You know, Victor has a lot of range damage that he can send out. Basically, suicide and trade his life for Power of Evils. Any one for one trade on Power of Evil is definitely worth it on Elements' side. Tabs will speed up all these members as well. If it's not scary enough that they're all coming for you at hyper speed. Gonna get even more tricky. Mm -hmm. So uh, Power Evil will definitely need his flash in the next fight. And maybe that's why Unicorns of Love decided to not opt for a flash tippers engage. Yeah, they have to be sure that they can shore up that defense. And Power of Evil though, he has been two-stepping all this game long and you know, showing that he can definitely fight in all sorts of terrain. That that over ledge engage over by the dragon, that really I think helped save the day, or rather helped uh, win the day more for his team. It was a big front line from Vizichachi he was working with, but still. Now, Elements have revealed themselves. There we go. On the hunt. They're looking for the Unicorns. There is no power here. Vardax is the first to fall. Chachi now being chased out. Kikis had already gotten back to safety, but this mid tower is gone. And Elements can keep pushing if they want. The Tibbers is down on Frog, and the barrel is going to knock him, but he will be able to flash out of danger. And thank you, Elements, for showing why Sivir is such a staple pick in the LPL, so many teams pick it first, ban it maybe even, and get such a high win rate because you can instantly turn the switch. The second you see somebody go to the bot lane, you can get somebody in the mid lane. You know, and in a region, it's all about running at the enemy team. It's, it's a small wonder, but here in Europe, Elements have shown that they can take that style as well. So, Unicorns now looking to answer back, but all of a sudden their wave is gone. Tibbers is going down too. Unicorns of Love looking for some revenge here. Kick is finding Promise Q, but he will hook his way away. Now he's stunned, now he's done. Kikis picks him up. Very nice pickup from the Unicorns. But if we go back to yesterday, the moment where the Unicorns lost the game is when they sent Power of Evil to get that side lane farm. Again, he goes for the bot lane. He shows immediately he gets punished. He is the cornerstone of the Unicorns in this pole composition. He has to stay around mid, somehow farm up that way. He cannot leave this lane. And this, this is a serious problem with the way that they picked their comp. We'll talk about that in a minute because Froggen is targeted out by the Unicorns. Kikis will get the kill for him. Dexter now being in the front of it all as it looks like we're going to have Tabs get the shutdown on the on Kikis and Hillisang going very, very low as Power of Evil provides some cover fire. It ends up being a two for one at the end of the day. Unicorns come up with that one and they should be able to push this. No, they're going to back away. I love how the Unicorns capitalize on advantages that they created earlier. Remember that Tibbers on Froggen and the explosive cast knocked Froggen back. He panic flashed where he didn't have to. Unicorns, they don't forget. They remembered that and now they killed Froggen. And they also got Jay Wow, and they got a tower. So with that, they secure their third of the game. The outer one in the top still stands, but they've knocked down two in the bottom, and now one in the mid. Dragons up in another 30 seconds, so Unicorns, they take the opportunity to go back to base, spend that hard-earned gold, and set up once again. And will we see a repeat here? Will the teams learn from their mistakes, play better against each other's compositions? Is Power of Evil going to die? I guess we'll see it on the next episode of Dragon Wars. Well, we want to wait very long for that one, Krepo. It's 10 seconds and counting on the clock. Dexter has found the scuttle crab. Looks to polish this one off soon, but Kikis, he has something to say about that. Rolls out the barrel, but he's all by himself, or is he? The rest of the unicorns are surely inbound. Visit Chachi has
has that teleport available. JWoww, no such thing. So the advantage to the Unicorns on that. They secure crab control. They start to clear the vision out, but Elements are massing. And watch how Elements is moving around like this big death ball, bumping on the hunt, and they're going in. Looking for Kikis, but they're slowed down by the barrel from Kikis. And all of a sudden, Chachi comes in. He's found in the gravity field. Twisted advance onto Promise Q, but in comes a big equalizer from JWoww. Chachi burning down. He melts the bark off the tree. And so far, it's a one for one, but Dexter's caught out. Hyperkinetic position killed. A double kill for Power of Evil. Unicorns are now hungry to run down some elements even further. Froggen has got a bailout. The Living Artillery flashing forward. Power of Evil, he's going to hunt him down, and he finds another. Three for one. And Power of Evil was virtually untouched that fight, and that's really vital. I don't like elements popping the on the hunt unless they have their eyes on the Unicorn's main carry, Kogmo. Power of Evil, they need to get him. They need to close the gap and kill him immediately. If you start the fight, these members are too tanky. Gragas is too tanky. Maokai is too tanky. If you don't get Power of Evil down immediately, look at it. He still had Flash. He opted to use Flash aggressively to settle a debt, settle a score with Frog, and he took him down, and he's snowballing out of control right now. Absolutely. Three kills to him. Zero deaths, five assists. You can't ask much more from your AP, Kogma and Power of Evil has just really turned on the heat here. Elements now looking towards the Baron area. Secure some vision up, make sure the Unicorns can't make that play. But they are now down some gold. They're down a dragon. 24 and a half minutes on the clock. What will they do next? Cheo looks he might be in trouble, and he has Flash. Righteous Glory popped. Yep, that's going to be Chachi, though, jumping onto him. Hill is saying is there. Doesn't there. even want to use Tibbers. Yeah, he's not getting out of this one, and they don't even need to burn much. Equalizer goes down, but Dexter's there for the answer. But all of a sudden, I think he's regretting that decision. In comes the Tibbers. Dexter is getting rapid fire down, and Vardax picks it up. Thank you very much, say the Unicorns. And now they should surely get a tower up top. Elements are scrambling. And we keep talking about Power of Evil, but you have to make sure that this is a team effort and everybody knows their job in the Unicorns lineup right here. We have the peel from Kikis, the knockbacks from Kikis. We have Vardex doing exactly what he needs to be, disturbing the enemy force, swapping where necessary, and he saying, his stuns have absolutely been so solid for the Unicorns. Absolutely, and team effort is definitely the way to describe it. You look at the scoreboards for the rest of the Unicorns, 2-1-8 and eight for Chachi. He's got participation in 10 out of 11 kills. 1-1-7 one, one, for Hillisang. Honestly, Vardex has been the lowest, but he's been wandering around. And now we've got actually a race on our hands. They're targeting, though. Power of Evil. Froggen goes in, flashes Chaos Storm, looks for everything, but Power is still able to walk away. Because he had Ghost. Unicorns are on the base. And this is why Power of Evil runs Ghost and Flash. One time Flash is enough, the other time Ghost is enough to, get, to go out. As long as you don't use both at the same time, he can get away. And as a result, elements use that time, or they lose that time and they lose their top inhibitor, and this is this is massive. Yeah, and they barely got anything back for it. A tower, second tier in the mid, and then they had to call chicken and head back to base. Unicorns, they're in such a fantastic position at this point. 26 minutes, they turned up the heat, and this is the Unicorns I think everyone expected to see from the spring split. And we saw them right on social media as well. Zero two would be very disappointing, and they, they're showing that they don't want to go down without a fight, and they definitely want that victory. Yes, indeed. Now, elements they are starting to mass up but once again towards the Baron pit. They do not want to give up that objective. But what can they do? The longer this game goes on, that Kogma continues to become a massive problem. And Unicorns of Love just keep extending this lead. Yeah, you said it right there. It's Operation Kill Kogma or Bust. That's what they need to do. If they don't get Power of Evil down quickly enough, they'll just, yeah, they'll just lose the game straight up. Yeah. You mentioned Distortion Boots and how useful they were uh, for Hilasang's Annie, but Froggen has decided to take a leaf out of that playbook. I definitely need that. Just want to flash aggressively on Victor and Immobile carry when your main job is to kill one guy. Added mobility uh, from the Sivir on the hunt. You basically want to get close, flash in his face, pop your ulti, and hope that he dies to the sheer amount of AoE spells, and then you can hopefully call your way back out of this tank line from the Unicorns. But if you look at Gragas, so tanky. Vardex amassing a decent amount of HP and base stats as well. Nobody will die except Power of Evil. You can see this, this brazen confidence that the Unicorns have. They don't even have Power of Evil with them, but they're still poking and harassing elements, confident that there will be no counter engage. Kick his, his forward positioning is just crazy right here. And he knows he's spotted. Yeah, they have to clear the vision though. Elements got a pink ward on the Baron. I'd like to see that disappear. They don't have the best siege potential. Yes, they have poke, but their AD carry is very short range. And I'm not sure if you want to put Power Evil in an attack range of that tower. 
Let's see if these pokes connect. Five members of Elements that are designed to run at the Kogma versus that beefy front line and the counter engage, the Annie, the twisted advance from the Maokai, the explosive cast from the Gragas, and now it is Unicorns that are running at Elements just to scare them away. They say boo, Elements say goodbye, and there goes the tower in the mid. Unicorns of Love still pushing on, waiting for Elements to back away, and now they can do it again. Kick they is going He blows up Froggen! What was that? Promise Q now trying to get away as Kick is occupies the attention of Elements, and in they go. JWoww's going down. Dexter having to flash. That's a double kill for Vardags, and it looks like the Unicorns want to end this right here, right now. Vizachachi spending that teleport. They know this game is all in the bag, Crapo. I could have never been more wrong. Just as I'm saying, I don't like them taking his tower. They take down a tower, they take down Frog and take down the Inheritor. Two Nexus Towers in the span of maybe one minute and ten seconds. Dominating performance on the Unicorns and very deserved victory. Kaboom! Goes boom, the boom, Nexus. Boom. And Elements are one and one in this split and so are the Unicorns. Excellent play from them to drive. And this is what we said, right? Unpredictable, 50-50 in a Week one proves a very meek performance yesterday from, uh, from the Unicorns, but fantastic play today. We said all in the spring, they were consistently inconsistent. And hey, here we are again. Yeah, that's an easy excuse to say. Whenever they win or lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're inconsistent, you know. Uh, Who can predict that? We'll come up with some new words, Crepo. Yeah, let's look at elements, though. They're looking to create a distinctive pattern and style. JWoww on the island in the top lane. Even though Tabs was on this utility AD carry in the bot lane, Dexter still spent a lot of time there. I'm not sure if I like that. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think again, you know, we, we asked the question of what, what is their identity at the beginning of this split. We asked, uh, you know, what, what we thought the style would be, how they would play around Froggen, or how would they do it, try to do something different. I think they're definitely still trying to find that out themselves. And it's not been bad at all. They, they, they played a very good game, they played a very safe game, and they took advantages where they could. But Unicorns were just able to outplay them and roll the lead forward consistently. This time, Power of Evil was not just an asset, not just the crucial part of the team, but the rest of the team had rallied around him and they made it happen. Yeah, definitely, definitely worked well for the Unicorns playing with Power of Evil. And that, that plays into the way On The Hunt was used. When Power Evil went for that side lane farm, uh, going back into the game, yes, you can punish the other members, but when you don't know where Power of Evil is, you have to hold that On The Hunt, wait for him to show his face, and then aggressively go on him so he can't poke you down or join the fight midway, because the Unicorn's members were so tanky that they could buy enough time for Power Evil to flank, throw down the artillery, and basically win the fight. You have to get on top of him immediately, because if you don't do it immediately, it'll be too late. Exactly. Just about it now. Uh, that's all for us. So we're going to go ahead and send it over to Quick Shot on stage.